catch you to start this match. Let's see. Yeah, of course, he's still going with the power break. That is the break for me. One ball straight in the side pocket. And there's something about, Phil, when they're breaking at maximum speed, I feel the balls have got more chance of opening up and being more spread around the table. I'm going to keep a good eye on this. Well, on his previous outing, as you say, Carl, his break was noticeably efficient. That's why he was delighted, no doubt, to win the lag by a fraction. You can see that two past the six isn't really on. It also doesn't look like he can go rail first and off the ball. Hmm. Overhead maybe tells a different story. He could play the bank shot as well. One rail bank into the top corner, leave the cue ball there. That's what he's played. And it's a good open. I can, I can catch it. this these are horrible he's got to get a lot out of the cue ball oh wow oh wow he is in fine form he's done tremendous to get the cue ball he really has that was as sweet as a bowl of sugar he hit that absolutely on the nose and the reaction look at it zip in the extreme Still got work to do. He's playing for the five, eight combo. He's human. He's missed the ball, Phil. Mark it down. Mark down the date. I must be honest, although the cue ball was close to the side cushion there, I'm surprised he missed that one because the confidence he must have gained from his previous pot on the two, I thought that would carry him through. Panda, it would appear, about to break his duck. <laughs> yeah, you can see the big lion tattoo on his right arm, can't you? jump cue again catch his nickname is the Albanian Eagle and he's flying high Phil he's flying very high the cue ball swooped down on that one question here Carl He's very tall, isn't he? Catchy, very imposing. Being tall, is that an advantage when it comes to playing the jump shot? I would say it's a slight advantage, yeah. Definitely. Now this, this is quite some hook. Oh, yeah, good luck in this one. Is there an actual path? Yeah, 
Yeah, maybe you can get through Extension the gap code. Though, in between the red three and the nine ball with loads of left. If not, he thinks he can go two, or is he going to try and one rail kick the three dead? Yeah, that's what he's tried. Bow in hand. It's not too clever. Having said that, Start does the, the three pass please. the nine? Then you've got that issue near the cue ball now, the pink four. Does that go past the purple five as well? So there's a few options here. There's also a possible Karen. After putting the two, he may be able to go off the edge of the three, use the cue ball to pocket the nine and win the rack. That's what he's played for. That's what he's playing. Take it on. That's how hard it was. He needs this to keep rolling. Well, this pot's catch. He can cut this ball in. That was a weak safety in both senses. Yeah, the overhead camera tells you how thin that is, actually. It's not going to be easy controlling the white. This will be okay, you know. That is a very, very friendly match in the green six. But it was Mario's fault. He was trying to get the five on the top rail and hook behind the eight. Because he didn't, it looks like he's going to be punished. Still needs to pot this ball. Still a little bit of distance here, but he can play quite soft. Don't need to get straight on the nine. Just make sure you come over to the right-hand side of the table. most valuable currency in Q Sport is being able to knock the balls in. And that's what Eklund Kachi can do. Looks good in the process. And he's certainly looking good so far this evening. If he can pot it and avoid the eight, he will attempt it. Don't know if it goes past the eight, the two ball. Yeah, so it looks like he can attack this. Cue ball's got to just miss the eight, and he'll probably play it with a bit of left. Yeah, there's the left, but there's the miss. Seems to be the two ball today. Without wish wishing to labour a point, the one that Zelinski missed with the ball in hand was one of the worst misses I think I've ever seen, if not the worst. This is the time for the panda to make his move. He did play the hook earlier on where he sent the ball around the table and stunned run through in behind the object ball, but I think he's chasing the nine with a cue ball. Shot. Oh, I thought he was going to double hit in. Played a clever shot as well. Tried to get a good four ball in case the nine didn't fall. It was close, it really was. You saw there from the replay, the cue ball just gripped the cloth a fraction of a second too early. Now this really is a good chance for the panda to just Getting back to two behind, he was 5-1 down. These matches, they can soon turn. 
So it looks like he's got to draw the cue ball back anywhere up top of the table. Five onto the nine. Oh, where's he going here? Well, he didn't play it like that, but it's okay. That would have had him a little bit worried at one point. Took care of that. That pretty much wraps this rack up. Would have liked the cue ball back another half a roll. He was straight on the six. Session code. He's won the rack. Now he's still going to knock this ball in. This angle, he can afford to just hit the left rail. The pocket should still swallow it up. He's done well here, Phil, hasn't he? He was down 5-1. Catchy was putting on a clinic in every department. Stubborn indeed. At one point, it had the potential to... Ball here. Oh, he's had the flick of dreams. That is the flick of dreams. This match has really changed. The first two racks broken ran by Kachi. In the fourth, he potted two balls with jump shots and a 3 9 combination to make it 4 1. He led 5 1. Since then, exchanges have become a lot more disjointed. That was close. Here's another look. Watch how close this one goes. And if that ball was going a little slower, it may well have dropped. When he played that, he needed to avoid the green with the cue ball, and he just about did. A half century of pots for Eklund Kachi, well ahead of Mario He. And now just two more pots away, make that one pot away from re establishing a two rack cushion.
Mario, he's found himself in a few big matches in the latter stages of these majors and he's had the lead in a few of them and kind of blown the lead a few times, Phil. The fact that he's down in this match, Extension maybe it's a code. good thing. Maybe he's coming from a different place. This is just all about hitting the blue ball. Very hard to vision a kick save here. It's very hard to hit it. It's easy to just miss this ball. Oh, Foul shot. It was a good hit. Unfortunate to find the corner pocket. Start the clock, please. And what compounds Catchy's angst. Look at the table. Every ball in the open. Into the Bumble B9, Phil. Yeah, the second nudge. One and six also helped there to achieve cover. He's fluked it. He's fluked the Bumble B. Oh, what a stinger. What a stinger for... Mario here, what a way to get back onto level terms. Wow, this match is taking some sort of turn. Carl Boy's called the fact that the nine would be running around the table, but he didn't see that one coming. Fell from the fluke of the match to possibly the worst safety shot. What an error there from Mario He to double hit the two and scratch at 7-7. Seven, seven. Wow. Don't especially like using this word, Carl, but I think it applied there. That was sloppy, wasn't it? Code. Surely you don't chase the nine catcher. What are you looking at here, pal? That would be very amateurish. And I say that because there's such a big gap. I can't believe he was even looking at it. It's not like there's any clusters or difficult balls. They're all sat in the open. All he's got to do is get on the pink four, off the red three, and the rack's over. Is the heat of the moment getting to both players? Well, the main thing is he he found the correct decision in the end. Yes, his rational self won the argument. Hitting that pink four ball quite thick meant holding for the five to middle was an easier task. Oh, catchy. I didn't see that one coming. One of the most reliable potters of the ball. And I tell you what, you know when he was aiming high on the cue ball and he was rolling it? I don't know, it's just a shot that, personally, I don't like. I'd rather kind of stun the ball in. It always looks a little wide. This time the jump does not work, Cole. 
No, I've said this a few times. We've not seen loads made. We've seen, you know, a few of the easy ones, but I think overall, not really a high percentage. But the the thing is, the modern day game of nine ball, the players just seem to pull the jump cue out. They don't really look for that kick safe. Extension code. Yeah, we've seen it so often here. Almost like a, a default position. Catchy's taking a bit of time here, but I think he can just pot it in the left corner and kill the cue ball. May have to play with a bit of left spin. Oh, he was okay. He played it with a bit of right as well. A must clearance, you would imagine. Yeah, that's perfect. He has got a natural angle just to pull the cue ball off on rail. Back up for the seven. The eight ball sat pretty for the nine. It's been one of those days here in Brentwood. The pool has been ultra competitive. And our third quarter final following the same pattern. Gotta stay still here, queuing off the rail. It made it look easy when it wasn't under pressure. not abandoning power and on this occasion it's served him very well yeah that's probably the most balls we've seen potted off a break here this week cue ball took a tidy nudge actually because it looked like it was going everywhere got to be careful here looks like the cue ball is going to be running into the nine this can always go wrong well, what shot has he left himself here? This is a big test, this. Couldn't get closer to the six. This is got distance. What a big shot this is to get on the hill. Nicely done, Eklund. Catch, he showed a lot of heart there. He showed a lot of heart. As Carl said on his previous shot, accepted his limitations with position, backed himself to knock in the six. He did so with aplomb, considering the situation. Candidate for shot of the match, that. And when you're knocking a ball of that nature, under this kind of immense pressure, it does an awful lot for your confidence. Darkening. This, this year, hit it a little bit too thick. Wow! 
Wow. It has stayed over the pocket. What shot has Mario he faced with? Here's another look. Extension code. Look at that. It stayed in the deep shelf of the pocket. Those who say pool is a game of fractions vindicated by that shot. So close to victory. What shot has Mario got? We've not seen the table yet. Well, it's a nasty one. It is a very, very nasty shot. Hard to see what the shot is there. It's hard to see how thin, well, I think he's got to chase the nine. I think he has to bank the eight onto the nine. Is he playing the cut? Whichever shot he decides, this is not easy for Mario. He's played the cut. What a shot Mario he has just played there. What a shot. Do or die in the heart of the pocket. What a pot. He's going to go hill, hill. Oh, we talk head. about shot of the match. Sometimes shot of the tournament. The eight ball from Mario He, arguably the shot of the year so far, considering the circumstance. That was simply brilliant. Using the 8-9 for cover. Oh, didn't get there. Didn't get there. kind of hook self-imposed at Hill Hill Sure, you hit the ball, and he did. Can catch you just roll this ball in and stay the six. Code. May have to play it with a bit of left spin. That will just pull the cue ball over closer to the six. Looks quite a steep angle, though. So it's going to be a bit of a scary one. You wouldn't want to be shooting the six up past the side. Well, that will do nicely. I think he did play that. And now, Mario He entitled to fear the worst, although lots can happen with so much on the line. That is 100 pots in this match for Eklund Kachi. But the only figure he's concentrating on, getting to 11, 11 racks. This looks okay. This looks okay. We have to go back up table, back down for the nine. If it had landed straight on the eight, the match was over. He just needs to get one more shot right. Now's your pace. Oh, this looks okay. This looks okay, yes, it's absolutely perfect. 
Gary Reef. He doesn't give much away, Catchy, but he give a lot away there. He is delighted. Yeah. And Clint Catchy was a millimetre away from victory in the previous round. But he comes good when it matters most at Hill Hill. That miss from Van Boning stopped us in our tracks. And I wonder if he's going to attack here. He's got a few safety options. Doesn't mind taking on a thin cut, maybe a long rail bank. And he's hit that way thick. So, like a lot of the players early, settling in. on the rail and could get a little funny. Yeah, cue ball. I can't tell from this angle, of course. But could be going a little bit towards the corner. You have to ease this in. Probably playing from the back side of the black eight. Coming off the brown seven. And hit that thick. The, the worry I have a little bit when it comes to what Shane's done today, he's spent a lot of time on that outer table, and they play quite a bit different, especially with the cold, damp weather we have. Like the shot when he came one rail across and ended up short over the six. I think he expected a little more bounce off the rail. Oh, nice shot there. Black eight got a little airborne as it went into that middle. Mm -hmm. A little more often you think they make these. Foul stroke, ball in that. Please start it. Yeah, he caught just behind it. And the spin that came off the side. Break in the opening rack. He breaks again now, in the third. Oh, that's more what he's looking for. Oh, Look. might be the opposite of a dry break here. It's a golden one. And Ko Yi, all of a sudden, is leading Shane Van Boning 2-1. One more chance to have a look at it. We've seen so many of them in this tournament. Most of them have been in the corner pockets, but this one is in the side. I think he kind of digs on the ball here and draws over. So overcut that by some mark there, Michael. <coughs> Yeah, well, you did say it was a testing shot. Miles out with that. Yeah, that's... Uh, we all miss, uh, but that's a miss you'll see from Kopi Nye about once or twice a year. That, you know, by that mark, anyways. Did take a brief break to talk to us, and it's always interesting to hear from him. 2-2. Two -two. Beautiful break off here. 
Making four balls on the break, and I think he has both pockets available for the red three. We'll see. I've seen a couple of breaks in this match with several balls down. I think Catchy had four earlier on in his match, and we were only commenting this afternoon how we weren't seeing so many multiple balls potted on breaks. It's changing now. Yeah, and Kopinyi not saying the break was bad by any means, but he did have a dry break, and he's breaking the opposite side of the box than Shane. And he's definitely paying attention to what Shane's doing, so we'll see when Ko gets back to the breaking in if maybe he changes it up a bit. And he fell straight and on the rail here and made a real nice opener there on the red three. And this is where Shane sometimes will get a little more out of the cue ball than some other players would, trying to go to the rail, get a little better on the six. Getting back to the table situations, he clicks in on, on the table itself pretty quickly. And, you know, as, as anyone, you know, won more titles or more money than Shane on the TV table. The hard, hard argument there. So up around $2 million in career earnings. There's a bit of debate as to what counts and what doesn't, but he's right up there with Efren Reyes as the two biggest money winners the game has seen. Whichever one of them is number one, there's not much in it. Not much in this match. Pressure's on. The maximum amount of pressure's on. If you make a mistake, he's going to get a quick win very unique in that manner. Okay. Easy to double kiss it. Easy to hit a little thin. He could bank the two up the upper right as well. Oh, he's going to fluke the pink four, and he's going to dress up a two-nine combination. Well, that's what you call a result. Looks faintly embarrassed by it, but he won't be turning down this combination. Yeah, and how narrowly he went by the nine. And Extension he probably call. knew he wasn't a huge favorite, but he was afraid of Shane being able to knock in, so he took on the shot. It's going to pay off. He's going for the combo versus the kiss. Still not been more than a rack in it either way. Some younger players as well. Shot. But you know, while you're waiting for that next wave of players to hopefully come through and do well at the highest level, thank goodness for Shane Van Boney, because yeah. without him, where would America be in these big tournaments? Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, it's alarming to a lot of us. Of course, we want more results. We're all patriotic to our country, of course. Wow, what a hit. I know it didn't really give him much results as far as the safety, but a nice hit. And the thing for America, that I think it's got more talent. It's just a matter of uh, putting it all together and keeping the players in the game. A nice opening here, and probably a quick winner to get knotted back and forth. Piece. Looks like he's got a either play the kiss shot or play the purple five into the cushion and then into the nine. Looks like a kiss shot. Shane Van Boning wins the And with that, Shane Van Boning levels it up for the fourth time now at four each. Yeah, and Shane, I was bringing it up. Uh, he's got so many fans back in America. Fortunately, we lost one of his biggest fans last week and a, a good guy, Chuck Carlisle from back in the Dallas area. I know he's watching from upstairs and certainly condolences to the family and the wife, Debbie. And pain was a big part of him getting in stroke. So I think the one thing we don't realize is, you know, it's one thing to be at home and, and, and playing and putting in a lot of time, but to travel halfway around the world and uh, be away from home 
a little extra. He probably thought he was doing himself some favors coming into this. We'll still see. Well, you're always learning, even after all these years. And he's been a top player for more than a decade and a half now. No matter what you do in life, you're always figuring these things out and maybe deciding, OK, maybe that wasn't the best idea. I'll do it differently next time. But right now, he's got to focus on this opportunity he's been given by Copenhagen's third dry break of the match. greats they're great front runners right but they're most of the greats are great because they can do it from all sides and you know it'd be a little shocker maybe but not not a big shocker if Shane just really played perfect from this situation here and went on to win this match and Co knows that as well well it's only just over a year since he produced one of the all-time great turnarounds 10-3 down the World Championship against Mika Imminent turned it round to win and went on from there to be champion. Yeah, and that's the big turnaround, right? We talk about that 10-3, even if he didn't win the title, but to go on and the way he played after that, just something special. Much better the last three or four strokes. I was talking about him running out from the break. Obviously, it was Coe's break in this, but if he does do this, he'll have taken all the balls in one go. And with that, he gives himself a lifeline and closes to 7-5 down. Some value. All right, should be behind the six with the cue ball here. This is actually laying really nice to let the stroke out with a little top spin, maybe a hair of left English. Ah, he's hit it poorly, he caught it in the face. Yeah, and I think we heard the cue banging on the floor. A look of absolute disgust. That is Van Boning's first dry break of the match. Yeah, and he definitely took a little speed off like the one earlier. You can see, though, those tighter side pockets, right? They make a huge difference on the break, it seems like. How yeah, I would think so. I think we saw that earlier today in a different way with Zielinski, that with so many big names going out, maybe he was sensing this was the time for him to win that big breakthrough major title that everyone's been telling him is coming for him and certainly didn't help him. No, and it's, you know, it's just like something you can't not think about. It's not like something you dwell over, but some people say, oh, don't think about that. It's just not how the brain works, right? So the good thing is for these players, all of them, they have their routine, their process. It kind of makes the brain just get into a more of a working mode. <laughs> Nice shot there. May catch the point, but shouldn't hurt him. So having just come from three behind to level the scores, Van Boning broke dry in this rack for the first time in the match. Cool, and Copenhagen Yi has swiftly regained the initiative. He's three away from a place in the semis. He leads 8-7. Jaws. Look at here, Michael. I tell you, talk about a good time to get, of course, two great break offs, right? So, some deserving layouts, but this is another pretty routine one for a player of this caliber. This may be under two minutes. Look at that. We were talking earlier about Van Boning's tendency to pop multiple balls off the break. Well, Copenhagen Yi has outdone him in that regard. Yes, he's had more breaks, I guess, but he's had more breaks because he's been playing well. And he 
kind of get the feeling, of course, this will get him to 10. So not an incredible statement, but I think Shane may be lucky to get back to the table in this match. Yeah, and I think if it turns out that way and he runs out this rack and then does the same in the next one, overall, it'll add up to a pretty accomplished performance. cue ball of a very small angle on the purple five. Now perfect to just draw up the left side rail off the eight. Should be very handy on a nine ball. So two breaking runs in a row. At a key stage of the match. Open knee first. like a one rail kick hitting down on this ball maybe a hair right english trying to straighten out the cue ball ball stroke no contact ball in hand please start the clock well he was three racks behind before in this match managed to get back on level terms he's got to do the same again now to set up a hill hill finish. talked about Four that as maybe frozen. being the start of a big turnaround but not for the first time tonight Shane Van Boning left very disappointed not just with the miss but by the degree of it yeah and you know if it, you know knowing him and the game a little bit and how things go whenever you are off you just looked at the three ball shot he played how far he went by Caught real first there, lucky not to lose the cue ball, but how far he went by the eight and made the four that much tougher, right? So if you're thinking well, you're you're like, it's almost like he was worried when he shot the three, like maybe the eight was a problem instead of just coming maybe a foot past the eight, making the four much easier. Another bread and butter here for Co. Yeah, a shot that he just rarely misses. Well, last year, it was low ho sum. This year, it looks like it's going to be Copenhagen. Nowhere near as much of a surprise as that was, but still, it's another disappointingly early exit for Shane Van Boning. His quest for a third World Masters title will have to run on into 2024. We may have a new champion here. We're definitely going to have time World Masters finalist because Copin Yee has finished off with four in a row to beat Shane Van Boning by 11 racks to seven and he'll be back here tomorrow to play James Aranas for a place in the final.